So if you want to call yourself a human, you damned well better be able to do all the things that a human's supposed to do. Sure. So don't allow or create limitations. We still don't have a podcast, but we do have Broderick Chavez here, leader of the Team Evil GSP, a performance-enhancing uh, group of individuals. That, I don't know. You just create awesome shit. And I'm been a member of your what, member. I've been a member of his member site for a while. Always digging around, looking for all the good information that this guy has to offer on performance enhancing drugs, diets, training, uh, and sports psychology. Honestly, like the training psychology, the sports psychology stuff, I think is one of your stronger points. And I don't think it's what a lot of people are asking you about. Not only is it definitely not what people are asking about. It, it's. It's not something that I go out of my way to present. It's usually just in the guise of some historical context or, or some personal context. Yeah. And unfor unfortunately for you, probably fortunately for me, that I've lived through so many iterations of this that I do have a certain historical arc that I can tell you about. Like sort of how things have changed or how people viewed things differently today than then or then than today. Yeah. Um, that as we were talking about earlier off camera, this is an industry with a relatively short consumer lifespan. A lot of 18, 16 to 20 year old kids get really interested in weight trading, go crazy with it for one to five years and then get a job, get married, get hurt, get something <laughs> and wander off. And so it's, it's, it's like a lot of like, like pro wrestling has a really short turnover it's perpetually the 16 to 25 year old which is always a new crowd yeah because of that i think there's an always a new group of people that just don't really understand how the past actually was yeah and that's where that comes in that sort of i don't want around like i'm the knowledgeable on sports psychology i think it's more of a historical eye okay i don't want to misrepresent my abilities like i have no official pedigree in that Okay. It's purely from a, a retrospective and, and also survived my, you know, point of view. You've been training for since what, like 1988 or 86 uh, or something? No, no, not at all. Um, my first day in a commercial gym was Christmas Day 1981. 81? 1981. Oh, now I just I, shaved off seven years now there. I'm sorry. I had, in fact, <laughs> trained the best I was able in, a, in my grandparents' basement five years prior to that wait what really yes how old would how old would you have been well i don't how old are you <laughs> it's a better question now i'm doing math i don't need to do that this late at night um <laughs> i, I five well, years actually when i say five years it's probably a probably three hard years and two very soft years to be completely fair but the switch was flipped for me somewhere around age seven or eight okay so that the, 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 the switch was flipped in that this is in fact what I'm going to do and my active pursuit of it was there in the basement that sort of thing and then Christmas Day 1981 was the first Christmas after my 10th birthday that was your Christmas gift correct it was a combination Christmas birthday gift was a gift certificate to the local gym so and I like an idiot you know ran down there to redeem it and as would be somebody that owns a gym the gym owner was in there on Christmas Day enjoying his own gym. Yeah. And I'm like an idiot beating on the door with this piece of paper. Yeah. And then he actually was... You would, I, I kind isn't exactly the right word, but understanding of spastic exuberance. <laughs> this 10-year-old so, is right, knocking so, my glass such outside. Such that he let me in. And yeah. my first day in a commercial gym was squatting with a really good squatter. Wow. Christmas Day, 1981, having never actually ever held a real bar. And I completely bluffed, like I totally knew what I was doing and walked, you know, walked up to the bar and shouldered it and, and did what I could did. That's amazing. Uh, what were you doing in your parents' basement before that? Um, like, what kind of training are you talking uh, about? Like Push-ups, chin-ups, makeshift dips between odd pieces of furniture, yeah, well, sit-ups. What gave you the idea to do that? Uh, TV? Uh, I don't want to I don't want to sit here in biography like I really have it cataloged. Yeah. It's just when I witnessed and it was Olympic weightlifting, you know, Serge uh Serge Redding and Ken Patera and Vasily Alexia and I kind of understood the whole like they get their job is to lift things and I was I don't know intelligent enough or aware enough I don't want to you know, aggrandize whatever it was, but I was cognizant of 
and that's exercise yeah. and that requires movement and I move these ways like it, that that's really about the height of the intellectualism that there was yeah and that's what I did and then couple that with you know you, you don't know I apologize the go to the library and find what do you what do you have on weightlifting what do you have on exercise and these just very almost random and bits and pieces that I, I you know and, and my my grandfather was humored by it enough to be like well in basic training we did push-ups and these things and and i was like well that, that, that's definitely going into mix and, i'll do that too right and so my repertoire just kind of grew on like anyone's just a collection of stuff and pieces and insights both wrong and right yeah you know and 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 then like anything you do it and kind of keep what you think is right and pitch what isn't and just learn and practice and rinse and repeat and you know what's interesting about your, your the story right now when i'm listening to you talk about it it doesn't sound like it had like outcome wasn't the thing that was predominantly on your mind it, it looked to me like you just looked at it like it was your job and you just did these movements and these motions and you just tried to get better at these things it wasn't like i'm going to do this and it's going to make me like super famous or i'm going to get rich or it's like well you're just I exercising for what i mean what was well, going through your head as a kid I, I, I will tell you what the initial because there's a little bit of duplicity and dichotomy there okay. because i do think ultimately it was just like wow i really love this and i'm gonna do this yeah. But I will confess that the very first idea was a bit more specific and also just amazingly, almost deliciously naive and stupid. Okay. But I, I, I long twisted story that just can, I will summarize as I had a very poor and very underprivileged childhood to the point where I did not live in a home that had a television. I did not have access to television. I did not see television. So upon visiting my grandparents, who ultimately I wound up living with, that so to fill in that, like, what? That didn't make sense. Yeah. So eventually I wound up living there, and then I had access to all of that. But previous, um, TV is quite the novelty to me. Uh -huh. um, so go to visit grandparents for whatever reason. I don't know what it was. Can I watch television? Yeah, sure. I go in the room, cross my legs, sit in front of the box, turn it on. What comes on was uh, a TV show called Wide World of Sports, which was, you know, lost the time, but it was essentially the um, kind of syndicated version of Sports Center. It was just an overview of all sorts of goofy sports things that have happened in vague recent history, amalgamated into an entertaining TV show. It happened to show Olympic weightlifting involving the absolute pinnacle, Serge Redding and Ken, and I saw it and I, it just touched some childhood button and I quite literally leaped up, ran around the corner, grabbed the nearest adult to me, drugged him to the television. And I was like, <laughs> that's a job, question mark. And they're like, kid, what, what? <laughs> like, like they're on TV, that's a job. Yeah. And they're like, they're, you know, and, and comedy is they actually were not, they were Olympic, but the, the response was, yeah, they're professional athletes. I'm like, professional, that's a job. Yeah. And just something struck in my mind that like, that's the coolest job in the world. <laughs> like you can, that's a job that involves doing something awesome. Right. And I just immediate was like, like. I don't know if I said this in my child mind, but the, the, the adult interpretation would be, that's the union I'm joining. Like, that's my job. Right. And from literally, from that moment forward, every moment that was even mildly appropriate, I asked, can I go to the gym and start my job? Like, I, I, I knew I had pieced it that far together that that was a place you went. Yeah. So it was like, can I go to work? Can I start my job? And that led me to the, I'm going to go in the basement and fake it and make it. And prepare and, for your job. And, and honestly, the commitment I spent piecing that home gym and home exercise adventure together was the demonstration of commitment that led to my grandmother buying me the gift certificate to the gym, which opened the door to the next stage. And I think that, besides being profound, and like that's the coolest job in the world and I want that job yeah. besides the profundity of that okay. there was also 
the realization in my mind that it was the commitment and the display of the commitment that facilitated the next step that that lesson imprinted on me probably harder than any other that if you show up and do the work you are proving to someone that you're ready for the promotion and that's literally how I progressed through everything. I showed such commitment that there was no option other than when. Not whether or not I qualify or it was just a matter of the gatekeeper going like, God damn it, yes. Yeah. That's the thing that I learned from that whole arc was one, that my parents were shit, my grandparents were my actual parents. <laughs> and secondly, it was the display of commitment that facilitated the next step. And I think that's actually the thing, because even into the drug realm, it was not like, oh God, I now have access to drugs, I'll just take drugs and go away. It was the endless pursuit, almost predatory pursuit of the next expert that might have something to tell me. Yeah. Like, it, it wasn't this passive, I'll just sit at a keyboard, and I'm not exactly besmirching the current iteration, that's what they have. Yeah. I did not have that privilege. And so the only way I could get to that input of information was to actively pursue. And oftentimes those people didn't really want to be pursued or when I found them, they weren't overly interested in talking to me. And then that was the next barrier. I had to show a level of commitment that I will not relent. I will yeah. not go away. <laughs> Literally to wear them down to the point, allow me into the next, the next promotion. Yeah. And then that is how I saw that. And I probably just ran crazy past what you asked me, but no, I apologize. No. I don't even remember what I asked you at this point. I'm just uh, <laughs> looking at this and uh, thinking about, you know, my own situation as well, how I started. And, uh, you know, I started, obviously, my question now is, is when you say job, that's a job. Mm -hmm. I think most people who are like in their, you know, late teens, early 20s, when they think of job, they're thinking of, oh, okay, this is what I do to earn an income. You know, the, the definition of professional is, oh, I do that for money. But I don't think that's what you were looking at when you were a kid on Christmas Day running in going, hey, I need to do my job, with, you know, yeah, with, a way, with a ticket. So I don't, I don't what know. does the word job mean to you in that respect then? Well. Is that a good question? It, no, no, it probably is. And it, it's probably just a matter of framing. Okay. I'm using that word job, not in a drudgery like oh i hate going to this place every day i'm using that word job more like an artisan mm -hmm. you know a, a tr you don't know i damn i'm sorry i said that that a a true artisan either l loved the idea of it or learned to love the idea of i will get so good at this i will be able to take this tree and make furniture i will be able to take these ingredients and make food i will there's an arc and it's a job for sure yeah with all of the um privileges and burdens thereof potentially income per, per potentially a niche potentially but also the you got to show up you got to be on time you got to do the thing you got to you you have to do whatever the were expected of you to keep your job right but also the I love the subject matter enough that I want volitionally, vocationally yeah. to master it, to be a true artisan. Right. I, I, I don't take it so far as like the Marxist idea that like a furniture maker just wants to make furniture and money be damned. Yeah. But I do take it as a, a, the best furniture maker loves furniture yeah. he loves the act and he she they love the act of taking a tree that nature made and demanding that it become this human made thing no. the volitional act has to be enjoy i believe has to be enjoyable no that makes sense and and i do so from my own side just to kind of like you know empathize with you here uh when i I, my story is like I trained for like 17 years before I made a dime off of what I did and there was never any intention to make money off of it it's just what I did with my free time so mm -hmm. I always instinctively chose jobs or quit jobs like to make jobs for money you know like mm -hmm. working at the store or this mm -hmm. I always was filtering based on is this going to affect my training or not and so I ended up in a job after college that miraculously did not affect my training that much mm -hmm. and so I just did this on the side and then one day I started to make money on training on accident mm -hmm. and I was like 
holy shit, like I just got paid $200 to do this stunt. But Wait a minute. N- you now, I mean? along with that, you, you, you recognize and acknowledge that you, for instance, chose vocational paths that were non-confrontational to your love. Oh, it was very specific. I was, yeah, I was careful but about my, that. My question is, how much did you actively or passively choose the people you were around the 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 the, the you know the the, the girlfriends the, yeah. the how much of that also shaped your literal life arc um well i mean the training kind of dictated like who i was going to be around including you know who i married you know what i mean so I, and that's sort of what i mean is like you make a certain level of commitment and almost contract right but then the magic of it is the 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 commitment to one thing sort of dictates and predetermines the other things oh, to right. just fall. The decision that makes it a thousand other decisions. Uh, 100%. You don't have to make those decisions now, right? Because that... Like if you, at l- me, if I simply relentlessly pursue the people that I think are the best in the industry, well, then there I am. Yeah. So now it just comes down to, do I have the capacities to absorb or even absorb sounds almost voluntarily do i have the capacity to demand the bit that i want to right. get the promotion do you, do you know what i mean yeah yeah and 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 i think that it's you the only way you get your into that position is the unrelenting commitment and then also along the way you have to have some talent and some luck and some things but i think if you make the big commitment the, the smaller shit just kind of self corrects into line yeah i wonder how much of that is just like because you made that commitment when you're very young and i made that commitment when i was to training when i was like 13 Mm -hmm. um after you know when i was a kid i i did fishing and this and that but none of it really stuck but when i did martial arts and started to get you know running for time around a track like two things i was kind of doing at the same time that's when i was like oh no this is what i really want to do Mm -hmm. and and every step of the way it was like another thing like um, when you said you, the TV turned on mm-hmm. and you saw the Olympic lifters and you're like, that's a job, you know, like your mm-hmm. head exploded. Like, yeah. wait a minute, and, th- that, that, that's what I want to do. And, I had that feeling myself with, with tricking the acrobatic stuff. Right. And, and just to be clear, cause I think I might've done a poor job explaining it. When I say that's a job, I don't necessarily mean like, Oh, that's a easy way to make oh, money. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, it really wasn't about the money. It's like in my mind, job equated to, uh, apprentice to master to right. that I was, was looking a path. At, right I was looking at it much more as a as as a a a, a, a path to with gradations yeah ending in like like you are the master artisan of that like you are the artisan of barbells okay That's, that was your job right like I don't think anybody arrives at the artisan stage without doing the job to get there. Right. Like maybe the rare savant, but I certainly didn't assume I was that person. Yeah. I'm wondering how much of it is like just predisposition as well. Like certain people are predisposed, predisposed to just like being able to commit to a path or something or whether it was just, that was particularly a path that just sung to you. You see what I'm saying? Cause like, yeah. And, what and, if, and what, are that, is that one in the same thing? Obviously you're flipping through the television as a kid and you probably came across a bird channel in national geographic, but none of well, that really actually, did the same. <laughs> funny you say that. Oh, you like I, birds, I, I, huh? No, no. The, the reality is you're discounting how old I am. Okay. When I was, you know, six, we're, we're going back 45 years. Yeah. There was three channels total that went through oh, the air shit. at that you point had three in time. Choices. <laughs> right. The paradox of choice didn't exist. Correct. So like when I point when I tell the story you also have to consider that the likelihood of this forming the way it did was wildly lower okay. than it is today. Like if you jump in front of any cable internet thing you can flip until you find a sports thing yeah. that was universally not the case at the moment in time in which this happened yeah the the happenstance is profound okay that somebody that would be inspired by a barbell sport happened to sit down on the floor at the exact moment that that happened to be there <laughs> 
Now, the curious question is, had that been horse racing, would I have been equally inspired? Was it was it a susceptible moment or a profound thing? To that, I, could, I, could, I have zero ability to answer. Yeah. I think not. Right. But I couldn't. I couldn't tell you with a straight face. Okay. It, it's it I'm trying to figure out like for the viewer watching watching or listening to this uh, <laughs> discussion here like a lot of people watching probably haven't found that thing mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying more people are like I, I don't know what it is so it's like what would you suggest to someone that seems well, of you know lesser flash of lightning commitment like that okay. that's what I want to do what would you suggest to someone that's like um, I'm kind of interested in this but I like this you know I'm actually going to explain why, then I'm going to answer a different question. Sure. Okay. And the why is I sincerely, universally, and dare I say adamantly, do not believe that I am in any way qualified to give anyone else life advice. Okay. I really don't think that that's something you should look to me for. Comically, and comedy is the right pun, the comedian George Cartlett. Yeah. has one of my favorite and almost life-shaping quotes, and that is, always do whatever's next. Ah. <laughs> and damn it, if that isn't a fantastic decision tree. Yeah. You just kind of like, you you do a course to a new place, and then you're like, oh, I'm here, what do I do next? Oh, yeah. And then and then you're like, oh, I do that next. Yeah. It's you do whatever's next. It actually is that. There was, yeah, there wasn't a big emotional thing. It was just like, oh, yeah, this is next. I'm okay. here, and I have yeah. the, the only way to get there is... Over sure. Here. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that's not true for everything in life, obviously, but I mean. Um, but but isn't it? Even if you like have some cobbled together master plan, yeah. there's still a series of stops. You know, if you're taking a long cross country journey, there's a series of rest stops that you're going to have to stop and do that. Well, what's next? Right. So I think it's always accurate. It just may not be the overall plan. Yeah. But it's certainly a decision tree on the on the journey. Right. This is interesting. <laughs> I don't even know where to take this. Now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. I'm the I'm the host right now. <laughs> but uh, so where where would you put yourself in a if 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 you're someone watching this, you mm -hmm. know, and that's not part of the equation. Um, uh, in terms of like, they're still kind of looking like mm -hmm. they they don't feel like they're not asking that question right, right, that okay. the guy at the gym was asking you. Maybe they're just looking like, dude, like I just want to get in shape. <laughs> you know, I, I just I, I just want to feel better. What? How would the commitment look better if it's just like an auxiliary part of what you do and not what you do? You see what I'm saying? So it's like everyone needs a certain foundation of exercise. 100%. For health. 100%. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people, if this isn't what they're going to do, this isn't their thing, but they want to check off the box, then what does commitment in that case look like? How how do you cobble that together? Well... Is that an is that yes. does that make sense? No, I don't it, know it, if I'm just it, no, it totally makes sense. And I have to say that I am about to speak this part 100% from the third person yeah. because this is not me. I chose a, a niche application essentially right out of the box. Yeah. However, the journey down that the journey along that course covered what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. Now it covered it in spades and then also went way beyond and even caused some of the damage that the, the metaphorical person you're talking about would have wished to ameliorate. I actually caused by going so wildly far down the path. Sure. However, the on the short term, my relentless unyielding pursuit of what I wanted covered that fitness, that capability and the word the only word that I can think of the only series of words I can think of to explain what I'm trying to say is the exploitation of the species as a human no matter how gifted or ungifted you are you have capabilities you have limbs and articulations and an ability to move and you have an innate relatively comparable to everyone else set of tools yeah and exploiting them is not just valuable but necessary to be good as the species okay okay there, there's a russian axiom in sports that if it runs like a dog 
barks like a dog, bites like a dog, it's almost guaranteed to look like a dog. That's from Russian sports? It, it is, 100%. I don't understand how a dog has to do with Russian sports, but... <laughs> but the, the point was... I don't need the... Yeah, the I don't point need. was, for instance, when, 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 when Caucasians found, Europeans found Australia, there were creatures that looked shockingly like dogs, oh. yet were not, but they hunted like dogs. Because of the behavior was so dog-like, they, over time, took on very dog-like characteristics. Yeah. And that has happened many, many, many times throughout nature in many, many niches. And so the idea was to be a decent f***ing human, you must do human stuff. Ah, okay. That was, the, oh, okay. that was the concept. So if you want to call yourself a human, you damned well better be able to do all the things that a human's supposed to do. Sure. So don't allow or create limitations but exploit so if you know you can run and you can jump and you can squat and you can shin and you can dip and you can swim then god damn so do so yeah exploit the capabilities with with of the species that you are if you find to be ex have an an excellence perhaps pursue but the the crime would be to not understood yeah 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 I, I think also, I don't know if I did a good job explaining that. I might have. No, you're saying in order to fulfill your human potential, you have to do the things that humans do. Uh, and those are things that humans do. Right. That's so this, what makes a human a human. Right. Is, so this idea of like, how do I get in shape? Well, my first answer would be kind of mean and sarcastic. Don't ever allow that to not be the case. Sure. Don't ever not be in shape. Like from the, from the out of the box, you should be doing human stuff. Yeah. However, let's say you let that go awry mm -hmm. the correction is get human okay that's it i wish i had something more clever or profound like you can run you can jump you can throw <laughs> go go do it then no no go <laughs> now if you are the sort that needs to be climate controlled and indoors and in under armor okay do your best if you're the sorts that have to be outside and you know holding a dog leash okay yeah but the 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 answer is just just do it right go go yeah. go go yeah like, <laughs> you, you know the, 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 i've heard like the um you know people that excel in running and so well how do i get into running they're like put on your shoes yeah open the door take a step Right. You're doing it. Goodbye. Like, <laughs> I, that, I think that that's the answer. And I know that that's a little mean-spirited. And I know it's also a little disappointing. But I don't... I think it should be disappointing. I think you should have that moment of like, <laughs> wow, I'm actually that big of an asshole. I think it should it, be disappointing. No, I think it should be because if it's not, you won't have that moment. Like if you have this moment like, oh, now I see the secret. You don't. Yeah. No, you have to. The secret is like, oh, I shit the bed. Oh, <laughs> and that's the secret. Actually, it's pretty interesting. Uh, this, this makes me think of something I say a lot to people who ask me like, when I was more doing the acrobatics, mm -hmm. I was like, how do you get into, it's called tricking. It, right. How do you get into tricking? It's like, I never got into it. It was never something I, I got you into. You didn't fall out of it. Well, no, it's just like, I just wanted to do a backflip. So I got a backflip. And then I, you know, and what's next? Oh, I got a, okay, a butterfly twist. And I got that. And then all of a sudden, I'm just doing one move at a time. And it's like, oh, that's tricking. But now you're, you're the interviewer, but momentarily allow me to ask you, but how did you learn to do a backflip? I just taught myself. Okay, but what's step one? Uh, watching other people do it and hitting the space bar over and over again on my computer and running my backyard and trying it. Perfect. When you say trying it, what was step one? <laughs> Scary. Okay. <laughs> like I don't know. Like, get some mats and like sit there and freak myself out in the backyard at 5 p.m., 30 minutes before sun close in January, you know, in my backyard. But the answer I was looking for was jump up in the air. Jump up, yeah. Jump, jump up. Jump, like, yeah. That's literally... That you you want to back, do a backflip? It takes place in the air. Get in the air. Well, I was gonna kind of come back to right. you know. I'm like, sorry. How do I get into running? It's like put your shoes on, open uh -uh. the door, go outside, yep. put one front and front on the other a little faster, a li and now you're running. So it's like literally like baby steps mm. in a way. Yeah, the, you could trick yourself yeah. into that, and if that's 100%. what you need to do, that leap is, into the air. Yeah, leap in the air, looking backwards. Right. Leap, leap, yeah. leap higher. 
Yeah. Look further. So instead of holy like, hell, you fell on your back. How do I get? <laughs> it? Yeah. Okay. So I like this. This is interesting way of going like answering the question. How do I get? How do I motivate myself to get into shape? You don't get into it. You just start doing the the small things that all of a sudden you're doing it. You, you become a human, and then you yeah. become a better human, and then you suddenly become a functional human, and then yeah. you're full human. Right. And maybe again, maybe you'll find superhuman, or maybe you'll just stop at human. But being anything less than human is dare I say subhuman okay now I like where this is going we're gonna go one more stop here before we uh, and I don't mean to insult this. people I'm like oh my god I think he just called us like animals or something but I, I I mean I guess technically word for word I did say that but I meant it ooh not just metaphorically but almost almost spiritually yeah is that too far no no it's uh <laughs> Oh, what what where I wanted to go is kind of like bring this whole thing full circle real mm -hmm. quick because I just found mm -hmm. a nice little yeah, like please. hook here. Um, these are ways to be human, like you said. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you you run and you jump and you roll and you move and you crawl and you touch swim your toes and, and you swim and and all the steps that build up to those things are small things. Now people have in their mind like. I don't think anyone is going to be dissatisfied with being a human <laughs> if they get there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say someone wants to be a superhuman. Mm -hmm. Someone wants to be a pro bodybuilder mm -hmm. before they've even stepped on stage once. So now you're now you're talking to someone who just wants the result without putting in any of the effort. The the funny thing is that they don't even know what it takes to get there mm -hmm. until they get into it and be mm -hmm. like, oh shit, this is why I thought it was. You see what I'm saying? Which to so, me is why commitment is the linchpin. Okay. Like commitment to being human. Yeah. Like I, I suspect as tragic as it is, that's too much commitment for some and they fail. I think we've met them. I think it's very tragic. I think it's terrible, but I also think they exist. Okay. So if you can fail at such an obvious and fundamental level, believe me, failure is an option in all of these other things. However, it's an option that can only come to fruition if you try. Okay. So it also, if that, that person comes to me, they're like, hey, I really want to be a pro bodybuilder. And I'm like, awesome. This is a workout. This is nutrition. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. So if, there you go. <laughs> and if they don't, it's a lost cause. Yeah. If they do, there's the... A, now a binary option of success or failure right and then you just monitor whether it's me or anyone else and someone that knows the next step will also know where the next step is sure D and there's always that like well what about the guy that just jumps ahead and takes a bunch of trend and the lack of commitment creates an environment where they don't have any of the foundational stuff yeah there will be failure Sure. 99 and some 9%. Yes, there's always that one individual that does get away with it. Mm -hmm. But the, the the reason there's an exception to every rule is because the rule's pretty goddamn good. Sure. And so, again, it all just comes down to that commitment. There has to be a certain amount of grinding right. and proving. And in retrospect, while you're doing it, it's hard and it's awful, and you develop a certain amount of like loathing for the gatekeeper and there's a resentment and there's a lot of stuff but when you finally get through the gate and you look back you're like absolutely yeah you could go through that gate too soon like i'm so glad i took the trip i took because now i have the tools to even have a fighting chance right if they just let me in this gate i would have been eaten by the wolves day yeah. one and that's unfortunately a very retrospective thing that I think is adulthood. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'm fully adult, at least emotionally, so I can't say that with absolute confidence, but I suspect that's the you know, intellectual and, and, and emotional maturity that is called, defined as adulthood. I think the value of this is, um, you know, some people just kind of like know the thing they want to do and other people don't, but then they can still get somewhere if they know how to take that first step. And I don't know. I just feel like in any any case scenario, people can always take a step in some direction. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and I and I think again, and I'm not even remotely claiming to be qualified to offer people life advice and any of that, but I think it all comes back to that you are human, assuming. Yeah. And therefore you have these capabilities. 
if you explore and exploit them, you will absolutely find the ones that are awesome to you and the ones that are less so to you. And so I think the sheer act of proving you're good human is the, also the way to sample all the palette of what ah, human has to give you. Kind of find what the thing is. That if you wanted to find the niche, right, you, 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 you kind of have to have a broad enough sample 100%. in order to know. Right. You know, is it throwing? Is it catching? Is it running? Is it jumping? Well, the only way to know is to do them. Yeah. And the beauty of it is, even if it's none of them, you come out the other end a better, more capable human what'd you lose right like your failure was a total win it turns out you just want to go to work every day and go home and watch barney miller like that's that's the last what happened but what you got along the way was fitness coordination capability friends experience you were a human yeah <laughs> probably better than the alternative i think <laughs> i i think and again, I'm not like hanging some like I have figured out the, you know, the I have the life lesson, the new stoic. I'm going to you know, write a book and patent a thing and yeah. trademark it. That's totally not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, I don't actually what I'm saying is I don't actually think I'm exceptional. I think I did human stuff and wound up with exploited human tools and yeah. wound up a, a good human, at least at something. And I think that that ability lies in even the least gifted person. That journey is available to them. I also think that a lot of people discount th their genetic capability in things when for myself, I don't think I'm predispositioned towards anything I've done. I think I'm average though. I think I'm just around average. And it, I, you can I, get pretty I, damn good with average. I, I think more people are just average, and that's okay. I would argue because again, I have a, a you know, what little you know good human arc I've landed at. My I'm good at is the coaching and the 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 the, the, the you know sports performance. Yeah. And because of that, I'm relatively familiar with the phenotype that becomes a relatively successful gymnast. Yeah. And I would actually say you're not it. No, I'm not it at all. That's what I mean. So, <laughs> so your average is, you're probably average to above average human. Yeah. But in the demographic of like elite and world-class gymnasts, I don't think you're on the chart. Oh, no, not at all. That's what I mean. Is, but I did okay with it. <laughs> but, but that's the point. Yeah. Is the journey got you to a place uh, that you found your thing, you enjoyed your thing, and actually even got the privilege of being successful at your thing. But had you not like, none of that would have happened. Right. You would have sat in a room and wondered what it would be like to be a professional acrobat. Yeah. Or just... A, right. Or anything. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Wow. What would it feel like to do a flip? Like you'd have that thought in your head for 40 years instead of doing flips for 40 years. Yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about what it would have been like if I just thought about doing it and instead of just like all of a sudden I'm just well, doing the yeah. thing without like, oh yeah, this is what I do. It's really corny that my like grand <laughs> self-help arc of, you know, great parental advice is just, yeah. just yeah, yeah. step out the door. Yeah. They're just the Johnny <laughs> Depp pirate. They just, yeah. You know, that, <laughs> that, uh, that apparently is the secret to all, or at uh, least mine. I think <laughs> it's, I, well, the secret's out now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Fair. You want to patent it and sell it as a system? I do. You want to sell it as a book with a big red seal on it to a, <laughs> a bunch of consumers? Uh, yes, and then every so often I'll throw the seal a fish. Yeah. The, the, yeah the <laughs> seals are funny animals. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, that's perfect. Thank you so much. And... TeamEvilGSP.com. I already mentioned it at the beginning of this podcast, but check out his website for thousands and thousands of hours of him ranting and raving mm. with the most colorful analogies, the most impressive vocabulary. It's just lots of good information. And it's just fun to listen to you fucking get mad about things sometimes. I, I, I do. I, I got to tell you. I definitely do. I, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. And a lot of the stuff I learned from you has absolutely like transformed my health and my outlook on things the last few years. So thank you very much for being my guest in this room. Oh, of course. And uh, if there's anything that, you know, if you ever want to come on again or do anything else, let me know if you guys want to see us do anything in particular, have any particular questions for him, um, comment below. But that's a wrap. Thank you. <laughs>